They didn't build snow days off, so they all have the same colors. But why would they have this in the LPR? All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have 6.01, so in the interest of your time and our presenters here with me tonight, I'd like to get started. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jay Burkhardt. I'm a superintendent of schools, and tonight I'm going to be facilitating the meeting. I'm sorry? Is that better? Okay. So um, I'm going to be here tonight. I'm Jay Burkhardt, superintendent of schools. I'm going to be here tonight to facilitate the meeting and share with you uh, reports regarding the high school. Unfortunately, we do not have anything back yet from East Pennsburg Elementary, West Creek Hills Elementary, or the middle school. We anticipate those tomorrow, and once they are here and formalized, we will post them on the website. We'll do our best to answer any questions regarding those reports. Uh, again, I apologize we're not here tonight, but we will certainly share, with them, share them with you as soon as we have it. Tonight, before we get started, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about why we're here and not at the LGI. First of all, I know some people are expressing concern about the change. The reason we changed is, as you know, this morning we closed the school. I closed the school. And as a result of that school being closed and the air quality test being done, I found it to be contradictory that if I held a meeting there and closed it to the students. So until we have those results, I felt it was in all of our best interest to hold it here. It was strictly precautionary. I want to be clear, there was nothing found between yesterday and this morning that indicated there was a heightened level of concern. There was an area identified by Mr. Sim in the tech ed room that had a spot, a darkened spot on it in the wood table. It had a lot of paint, a lot of grease, and a lot of uh, mold, or excuse me, glue on it. So we're removing it, and we'll have it tested. But that was the only area in approximately 180,000 square feet of the middle school that was even brought to our attention. West Creek Hills, we had areas that we're going to test that are in corners, but there was nothing visible at that time. I will be very honest with you and tell you that when I woke up this morning, it was a very early hour, and I wrestled with the decision. And I'm not kidding. And if it was it was 3.45 in the morning. And I don't tell you that for your sympathy. I tell you because it weighed on my mind. And I want you to know that your kids are on my mind all the time. So I came to the decision at 5 o'clock to close precautionary in the best interest of kids. That's why I did that. So I want to be very clear with you and very honest with you. I have no additional information on those buildings than what I've already shared with you. And I will share everything I have with you as long as I can share it with you. So how do we get to this point? Well, I, 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 let me I digress. Uh, we have Mr. Roush here who is from Cumberland Analytic Labs. He is a gentleman who conducted both sets of tests. He will speak to you tonight about the original test and then about the most recent test that he literally brought with him hot off the press today. And then we have Dr. Dunkelberger up front, who, as many of you know, is a physician, our school physician, member of the community, and he can address concerns to the best of his ability. And out of respect for Dr. Dunkelberger, I know this is not his field, but I'm extremely grateful that he agreed to come here tonight to attempt to address any concerns you have. So I have other staff members here. I won't waste the time and introduce all of them. Not that they're a waste of time, but I'm in the interest of getting everything to you as quickly as we can. We also have teachers uh, interspersed through the crowd, and so I welcome them as well, and I appreciate everyone taking the time to come out tonight. This is a very important issue, and to, to suggest otherwise is not. You, we won't hear from me. So how did we get here? Last week, our teachers reported for in-service. Prior to that, and I will ask Mr. Brandt to correct me if I'm wrong, Obviously, I have a lot of information in my head that I want to share with you. And if I overlook something, it's not intentional. I'll be happy to, if you ask me about it and I know about it and I missed it, I'll tell you. Last week, uh, we, we had teachers return from in-service. And when I went up to the high school, it was Thursday afternoon, late Thursday morning, early Thursday afternoon. And Mr. DeRazio, our new principal, which, by the way, Mr. DeRazio, where are you at if you want to raise your hand? Mr. DeRazio is uh, the successor to Mr. Robbins. Some teachers had shared with him concerns about spots that were on their ceiling tile. So we went, we looked at those rooms, and through that process, we identified some wrapping around the insulation on the chilled water lines. Chilled water lines, and I'm going to give you the best explanation that I can give you, is it's the water that goes in our air conditioning. So as most of you know, over the past few weeks, we experienced record levels of humidity. And during that time, these pipes sweat. 
our pipes had sweated or sweat to the point where it actually dampened the, the paper or the insulation around those pipes. And I learned tonight that mold cannot grow on insulation, but it can grow on paper. And paper wraps that insulation. So over the course of a week or two, and that we're assuming to the best of our ability, that that insulation became wet. That wet, if during that sweating process, it worked its way down, humidity was high, and for my understanding of mold, moisture and humidity equal mold, or the potential to grow mold. So the paper on that started to demonstrate there was a mold growing, and we know that because of the testing, and it also caused some water to leak onto the ceiling tile. And if you know anything about ceiling tile, which I've learned, is that it's very similar in its makeup, and it has a product called cellulose. Cellulose, mold-like cellulose. It feeds it and it grows. So, so during that process, we went around and we looked at it. Teacher shared concerns. Mr. DeRazio shared concerns. So we contacted uh, Mrs. Holly, Mr. Brandt, and we arranged for Mr. Roush and his company to come in and do some testing. I did clear this with Mr. Ross. I'm not saying anything that I haven't talked to him because I want to make sure I give you everything I have as accurately as I have it. So during that process, and he came in and he looked at it, he couldn't tell if it was dirt or if it was mold. Is that fair? So we felt that to go through with the process and test it, we would determine what it was. That was Friday afternoon. Friday led to Saturday, Saturday to Sunday. On approximately 4.40 on Monday afternoon, a staff member received an email that said there is a condition with elevated mold, higher than what's outside, and a report will follow. And so Tuesday morning, I got the email. My email stamps at 624. I looked at it at about 645. Left my house, live about 10 minutes away, and I got to the high school about 710, 720. And I'll ask Mr. DeRazio, Mr. if Mr. Blasco here, he may not be. But Mr. DeRazio, when I arrived in the school, I asked both he and Mr. Blasco to come into the office with me. I explained to him what we found through the report and that we were going to dismiss the school because we had higher mold conditions inside than we did out. The recommendations on it were that we were to clean the area and put in an air scrubber. I felt it was necessary to dismiss. Now, let me jump to the elementary because you're going to ask for well, why the elementary. So after that process finished, I contacted Mr. Tuzarcha. During the course of last week, when the teachers were here in service, there were two chairs that developed spots on them, on cloth chairs. And so they were wiped clean. One was actually discarded, and there was an area in back of the one room that had a little bit of, I, won't, we'll call, I guess it's mold. I mean, I won't, it was very small, and you could wipe it away. So with that knowledge, we also decided, okay, let's clear that school too. So we dismissed that school, and I want to go back to the West Creek Hills Elementary and the middle school had no additional concerns, and then we learned of uh, the, the table. So we dismissed, and we ordered additional air quality testing. The high school is back. EPE is not. They were taken, they were both taken on Tuesday, correct? But the, they had to go all the way to Richmond. There's no lab locally that'll do it. So we shipped it to Richmond, and EPE didn't make it in time. So that's why we're getting everything back tomorrow, and that's why we're closed. So. With that, uh, we, we addressed it. We did a visual inspection of the, the pipes, the chiller pipes in the elementary school. And it was through golden rule insulation. Is that correct? Thank you. So when he looked at it, there was no evidence whatsoever of any growth on any insulation through the basement of EPE. There was one area next to a handle. If there's a shutoff valve, if you're familiar with those, you pull it closed. It was a small leak, so it was a little bit of area around that insulation that was wet, and then it dripped down onto the, uh, onto the ceiling tile. Now, I will not tell you that there aren't ceiling tile with stains on them in our school. There are. They're water stains. I have them in my house, but they are not mold. So we, we then met with an expert, and I wrote the company down. I'm sorry. It's uh, TJ&M Duct Cleaning. TJ&M Duct Cleaning were brought on site, and they went through the room, and they went through the school with us, and they took a look at everything. And what we found in East Pennsburg Elementary is that we have a high humidity issue. And he had this gadget, and I, I don't remember the name. Humidistat. 
was digital, and the range of acceptable humidity in a room was between 30 and 60 percent. So we were reading at about 58, 59 down in these rooms. And it actually, it actually caused some of the ceiling tiles. Ceiling tiles a little bit bowed, and that's from the humidity. So it was the opinion of this gentleman, whose name was Mike, I don't know his last name, and I'll get it for you if you need it. He, uh, he said, we have a humidity problem there. So how many of you are familiar with all the work that's being done at the middle school? The construction, you've seen the work. That's being done by a company called Heim Corporation. And Heim Corporation is a mechanical contractor and general contractor. So they do everything from water line replacement to working and subbing out or contracting exactly what we're experiencing, some mold removal. So they, again, contracted with this company, and he came in and he said that, okay, we're going to clean this up, we're going to remediate it, get rid of those chairs, and then Heim is going to send us their mechanical contractor. The mechanical contractor is going to come in and he's going to talk with us about our unit events to see if we can adjust those in the flow and where are we having some inefficiency that we could then eliminate that humidity problem. In addition to that, we're going to put air scrubbers in that basement and we're going to have some dehumidifiers. Now, let me kind of put everything over the top of this. The district is now involved in what's called a feasibility study. Feasibility study is where we contract with an architect and it's Crabtree Rohrbaugh, and they come in and they take a look at all your facilities. And they say, East Pensboro, this is what you should replace, this is what you should renovate, and this is what you should rebuild. Now you may not do all three, and you may do none of them, but they tell us what they find. And with the feasibility study comes a bond issue. And you'll hear more about this over the next year because the district's exploring this. For lack of a better way to explain it to myself and how I'll try to explain it to you is a bond issue is a mortgage, except it's a large sum of money. And with that money, we are going to do a lot of the things that we're doing now. We're going to update our HVAC. We're going to make sure we're modernizing, getting more efficient. And then we're going to repair any infrastructure. Because at the end of the day, the middle school is 45 years old. The high school is older. And West Creek Hills is 50, over 50 years old. If any of you have terracotta pipes at home or other underground pipes that are that old, you are probably facing similar issues. So we know that. So all of this is happening. Well, this just made it happen faster. So we remediated, we removed it, or we, we took care of East Pensboro Elementary, and that brings us to the high school. So how many of your kids play sports at the high school? Did they tell you yesterday they were hurried in, got their stuff, and hurried out? That's my fault, and let me explain why. When they started the remediation process, I was unaware that they were going to lock the building down. I'll take the blame for it. I didn't ask the question. But once they started it and they were removing this process, they wanted to eliminate any exposure to anybody. And I'll ask Mr. Brandt in a few minutes, he's going to talk to you about some of the steps they're taking with negative air and sealing it off and proper removal, things I don't understand. Things that I know, some of you may, you work in that industry, but things you know that they do to make sure that it's sort of like an abatement or it's, so, so that's what they're doing. Well, the kids couldn't go back into school. So once they started that process, everything had to come out. So I will applaud Mrs. Moody, I will applaud all the coaches and our student athletes because they were able to get in, get their stuff, and get out. And I apologize for that, but we were able to do it in a way that no sports were interrupted and they continued. So we're trying to keep the operation of the school as normal as possible. So that comes to where we are today. Today we have a report, I'm going to turn it over. Today we have schools that are closed through tomorrow, and we know that if we're to do the high school the proper way, we're going to be closed through Monday. That's assuming everything goes as planned. I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, and I'm sorry that it's been disruptive. It is not something I planned, it's not something I want, and no one wants it fixed faster than me. That I can assure you. I think what we have to do tonight is answer the questions you have, share the information we have, and then forge a path going forward to make sure that our kids get what they need. And we will have, I don't have makeup answers for you yet. I will have those for you as soon as possible. To be honest, folks, that is pressing, but it's not immediate. These other things are taking more and more precedence. So I hope to have a recommendation to the board at our September 1st meeting about makeup. I will also tell you that closing the school, two schools on Monday, or excuse me, Tuesday, I will apply to Pennsylvania Department of Education for what's called a waiver. And what that allows us to do is it counts today, and there's not a penalty. The kids don't have to make it off. I'm not big fans of waivers because I don't like losing instructional time. But given the situation and the difficulty, it would be to make up two schools instead of all four. That would be my intent. I won't have that answer by September 1st, but I will apply for it. So 
I think that kind of brings you to the point where we are where we are now. And I'm asking Mr. Rogers to talk about his findings the first time, and then his findings the second time, and then. After that point, uh, we'll ask Mr. Brand if you could just talk a little bit about the removal at the high school and what they did at your high school, for example. And I see potential mold growth on a pipe, which is you know what I saw when I got there last Friday. It was either mold or dirt or, or something. I can take a, a wipe sample of that and send it off to a lab to find out whether or not it's mold. But generally, as a sampling strategy, I'm more concerned. Not only do we look at the different species, but we also look at Know, what the outside elevation was that day and we we really hope that the inside uh, mold counts are a lot lower than the outside. The two samples I took, uh, both of which were higher than the outside, not by a lot but they were higher, and both of them contained species that normally isn't, isn't something we find outside. It's, it's a species that we would generally find with uh, wet drywall, wet cellulose, uh, ceiling tiles, wet insulation paper. So the, the species we found that, was, that were elevated during that sampling period were a species called uh, Penicillium and Aspergillus. And they, uh, they can create allergic reactions based on individual immune systems. So uh, I, I received those, I took the samples on Friday significantly, way below any, any type of even allergy threshold and they were way below the outside levels. The outside levels were at 2200 this time. So in four days, your HVAC system has been working properly, filtering out any mold spores that are in the air because none of the remediation has even, didn't even start till last night. Is that correct? So if you have questions about the sampling or any of the results, I believe that they will be posted on the website with a copy of my formal report, which for the high school you'll have tomorrow first thing in the morning. And we'll have results for the other two elementary schools and the middle school probably late tomorrow afternoon. They just missed the cutoff. I had to get to the, the shipping station and we, we missed the cutoff. So you'll have those tomorrow. Any questions about what I've done? Uh, next, if we have uh, Mr. Brand, he's going to talk a little bit about what we're doing at the high school and what we've done at the elementary school to, to remediate the concern that we've identified. So, Mr. Brandt. Currently, our contractor, remediation contractor, is removing all of the cellulose-backed uh, insulation wrapped around the pipes on the chilled water side. Once that's removed, they're going to scrub the pipes down, eliminate any possibility of, of any contamination or growth. They have uh, uh, quarantined or, or sectioned off the, uh, their, the sections that they're working in. So they have a negative air uh, system in place so we don't cross contaminate or the possibility of cross contamination um, into other areas of the building. So <clears throat> when they're done with that, um, that process of, of removal and cleaning, they will um, turn it over to the insulators. The insulators will be using an Armaflex product this time. This time the Armaflex is, is, a, um, is a rubber based uh, insulation product um, and it is sealed, 100% sealed uh, with glue and it has an anti-microbial uh, um, barrier in it. So the chances from what our um, insulator contractor is, is telling us, the chances of this uh, occurring again is slim to none. Now the project, we decided it will encompass every classroom, every bathroom, every hallway. We are gonna stop short um, at the mechanical rooms, but if we find that we have to move forward with the mechanical rooms, um, we will we will take the necessary steps. If we can hold off due to the uh, possible money issues um, till the feasibility study is complete. We can do this and incorporate this into a you know a contract or a project. We will certainly do so. But at no point will we 
you know, put your children in the home. Just two uh, other quick things I just want to bring up. And I, again, I apologize, but remember, I said there's a lot going on up here. So as it comes to my mind, I want to share it with you. First thing is, Mr. Brandt talks about not taking it into the mechanical room. Be very clear, there is no moisture identified or mold in that wrapping around that room. So it's not that it's being overlooked. It's just not, it's not an issue right now. The other thing, and if we have high school students in the room, I'm going to apologize up front. Once this wrapping is removed, it's going to take about a month to put the new one on. You cannot wrap a pipe that has moisture on it, which means the air conditioning is going to be off. So let me tell you a couple ideas that we have. <laughs> okay, but what we'd like to do, uh, and I did rush discuss this with Mr. Derezio, and, and if we get a day where it's unbearable, and we know that that can still happen in through September, I get that. You know, we've all experienced that. And we find that the prediction is going to be really high. We'll communicate that. What we're probably going to do, and again, share this with you, is reduce the 68 minute periods to maybe back to about 45. Keep a normal lunch because we want to make sure the kids are fed before they leave or head to sports. And then try to get them out a little early that day, maybe 1 o'clock, a little earlier if we could. They get the instruction. We'll work with the teachers to see if we could do some work on Google Classroom. And that it'll be a minimal disruption, but we'll also be aware of that if it is an excessively hot day, we want to be cognizant of that. We'll keep lights low. We'll try to get some fans in there. Kids can carry water. If they're having issues and they need to get down to uh, the nurse, certainly they can do that. If they need to go home, that's fine. But in order to do this right and put this Armaflex on, we're going to have to shut off that air conditioning. I know some people have asked, are we going to go back? A few years ago, we did half days, half high school, half middle school. That's not being even considered right now because given the short turnaround time with, I know it's long, but it's short. We can have this repaired by next week. I don't feel that's necessary. I think we can get the time made back up and we can get the instruction covered since we're so early in the year. So if there's any concern about that or questions about that, I'm here to tell you as of this moment right now, that's not even been discussed or considered. So I hope I can put that to ease. And I'm, again, I'm trying to address as many questions that I've been aware of prior to it and certainly answer anything that comes tonight. So, and the other thing is how did this happen at the high school? Because that's a, sure, a question I'm sure you're gonna ask because those pipes have been there for how many years? Why can't we just wait? I'm sorry? Why can't we just because then the condensation will go right to the floor and hit the tile, the ceiling tile. And this is all in areas that aren't currently affected. It's all throughout the whole building. I'm sorry, what? The whole building. The whole building is having all the insulation replaced. Because we're choosing to at this point. Yes. So we can run the air conditioning once it's replaced. We don't need the air conditioning, right? So right now you're choosing, you have an area that has a problem. And, but you're choosing to go past that problem and replace all of the stuff that currently doesn't have a problem during a time of year when you actually need the air conditioning and then take it off, throw it out, have to wait for it to dry while we can't use the air conditioning needed and then put it on just in time for us not to need it again. Mr. Brand, did we find that the moisture was in all throughout the system? We have found indications of moisture in a large portion of the lower level um, from the office all the way around. Well, I wouldn't doubt that you're going to find moisture, but we're talking about mold. They go hand in hand. Well, of course they go hand in hand. You have to have the moisture to get the mold off the paper, and that's how everybody's right. going to insulation. And, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't take it down mentally. I'm just questioning why you're going to take it down when they need the air conditioning and they're already missing school. So we're talking about then missing school, then them not having air conditioning, and while they don't have air conditioning, potentially missing more instruction time because they don't have air conditioning when that area doesn't have a mold problem. You can certainly take it down during a time period when, say, Christmas break, which isn't that far away at this point, and it would certainly dry because you won't be running the air conditioning and put it on in, say, January throughout the month. Because at this point, I know we're not talking about makeup days, but at this point, they're already missing four days of school, which is all the makeup days we have in an entire year. Correct. So 
it just, I'm not trying to be rude, but it seems kind of ridiculous that while it does need to be done, that we're choosing to do all of it now at a time when it's really not inconvenient, but it's really inconvenient for the pieces that you need to do. You certainly have to address the part that's critical and is a hazard to the teachers. And for a long term, you need to do the other pieces. And it's, you can pull it off on that for two months and you address to have your problem. You have long breaks for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and you have to do it during the year. Well, uh, you are correct, but there also becomes a point where there's an efficiency to doing the job. And while they have the equipment there and they're removing it, it becomes a, a time factor for that as well. And, and, and I get it. I understand that the concern it's about the... Uh, I understand that. But we also have to keep in mind the health and safety too. So that when we're removing it, any area that's been affected has been removed. We have to replace that because we cannot run the air conditioning until that's replaced. Well, we'll air conditioning in October, November, no, but they've are, the areas that are affected have already been removed. So they have to be rewrapped before we can run it. Just said it has to dry out for like a month. No, I'm sorry if I. It's going to take a month to put the up to a month to put the insulation back on. It'll be dry when it's removed, and then it'll be rewrapped. It could take up to a month. The other part is there may be sections of that building that we can turn on. Okay. Okay. So, yes, sir. I'm sorry, we're going to bring your microphone back. I can't hear it. I apologize. All right. Wow, that's really good. I like that. When you have a hot area, your cold water pipes will condensate like crazy to where they will drip all over the place. So if you're going to leave, I'm sure you're going to leave the water lines on in your school if you're going to have people there. How are you going to address the cold water pipe from condensating and leaking everywhere and creating a new mold problem while you're attempting to clean it up if the AC and HVAC's off? Well, that's, cool. that's why we're saying that air conditioning will be off for the duration of the project. I, I couldn't really hear you, but what I could hear is you said that you're turning the AC off so they don't condensate. Is that what I heard? Your system will be off. The ceiling tiles will be removed. The space temperature will be tempered. So the water temperature and the, and the air temperature should be closed to avoid the uh, any condensation while the system is off. Okay, I'm going to Professor, we're talking about the domestic water, the water that goes to the sinks. If those pipes are going to sweat when it gets hot because the air conditioning isn't on, will they be wrapped and could that be a potential issue? All of the water lines are very currently. Um, and, and currently show no signs of any, any mold that we have seen. Um, so we do not anticipate an issue with that. Does that answer your question, sir? I don't think we heard the first part you said. You said they are wrapped or they are not wrapped? They are wrapped. They are wrapped. Yeah. Are you concerned about the elevating? We don't anticipate those sweating through that existing. Correct. Correct. We will monitor that. And we determine if there's a moisture, we're going to correct it immediately. Oh, that's the other thing I want. Again, I apologize. Uh, what are we doing going forward? We are committing to quarterly testing for the remainder of this year. So every three months, we're going to do an air quality test in each building, and then each Christmas break and each summer, we will be popping tiles to make sure we're inspecting those lines to head off any potential issue in the future. So that's 
again, piecemeal information, we're going to get it to you, but that's what we have. As it comes to my mind, we'll share it. Ma'am. This was found on Friday. Why are we here for cross but we've been here and that's a great question, and I think we sort of said that earlier that when it was initially found, we were unsure if it was mold or dirt. Okay, but you even had a question that it was possibly mold. You're putting our kids at risk. I mean, I heard you on an interview this morning say the average student won't be affected by this, but there's 30% of those kids who are under that average for health, mm -hmm. who have asthma, who have respiratory issues, Going home to, to uh, families who have, you know, a weakened immunity. And, and I mean, like, you keep saying that it's all about the kids. It's not all about the kids. And, you know, you're worried about the cost and, and you know, turning the air conditioner off. Is there a, 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 an office building that's completely empty? Mm -hmm. there and, and you're not going to pass it there for you. We can't. Uh, well, to move it over there for four days. And, and I appreciate your point. And, I, to my, my answer. I mean, if you're going to turn the air conditioner off for a month, let, let the kids go into an office building that has air conditioning. Okay, well, let me, let me address the first part, if I can. The first part that you said, I'm going to tell you that I made the best decision I had, I could make with the information I had. I understand your concern. I get it. I really, really do. I. I can only tell you, based on the information I had, the, con the conversations we had, that was the decision. We got the information back, it showed an elevated level, and we took immediate action. I wish I had, I, I don't, that's the, I'm just telling you, I made the decision I had with the information. You were told, you've got so many units, go in there, get your stuff, get it out of there. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't somebody who's already in there, um, going to studies and stuff, they hadn't started yet. No, they hadn't started yet. They hadn't started the remediation process yet when we sent the kids in. No, but the ceiling falls and down. On the other end of the building, yes, you are correct. Okay, so there was a quality of air problem. And you're sending we, our kids yes. back into the school before they close the school. Yes. Okay, and you're saying that they were sending them back into the school before they closed the school. Yes, but I also, my point to that too, ma'am, is that we know that by the time that that happened on Tuesday, the readings were back down into the 100, 200 level. So the air quality issue had been abated at that point through the HVA system. So those readings that were high were originally on Friday, the students hadn't returned. They took the next sample on Tuesday, they had fallen to that much lower level. So by the time they went in on Tuesday, those levels were down in the hundreds. Yeah. We did not, that's correct. Yeah, but you knew that there was a mold problem. We knew there were elevated levels, that's correct. Okay, so it's like Monday and two hours Tuesday before you like you said you got the email seven something in the morning. On Tuesday. And they weren't dismissed until nine thirty. The buses were en route, we got them back as quickly as we could. I, I, and out of respect for Dr. Dunkel Berber's time, I'll come back to these questions. Are there questions? <laughs> If there are any health-related questions, he'll do his best to answer them. And if there's something I need to address, Dr. Dunkelberg, I'll be happy to do that. So, he's just here to help. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I, uh, whoever's calling me out there, I'm not going to answer right now. So, hang out. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I need to make it clear to everybody that I am not an air quality expert, nor am I certified in infectious diseases okay so there's going to be a lot of questions about it, uh, possible exposure and what does that mean for my kids what does that mean for me that I, I work in the building and I'm going to give you some general things that um, can help guide you but that's really going to be a conversation between you and your your provider um, to, to speak to you individually about symptoms that you're having over the last 24 to 48 hours this isn't really the time or the place to do that. Um, you know, I'm a, I am have a daughter who attends the school, and so I'm not just here to help you guys get through this, but I, I'm here for answers myself. Um, and I, I do have confidence that 
the staff, the administration, and the people that they've hired are going to do the things that they need to do to make sure that the air quality is such that it's going to be safe for our kids to go back to the school. Um, to my knowledge, nobody, no student on Monday or the two hours that they were in on Tuesday contacted any of the nursing staff in any of the buildings complaining of any symptoms. Um, Now, um, once, a school once school resumes, I'm going to have you encourage your kids that if they don't feel well, if, if they feel primarily upper respiratory type symptoms, uh, to contact the nurses. Go see the nurses and maybe go and see their providers um, and, and see if there's anything there. The people that I think should contact their providers uh, maybe even a little sooner is anyone who is taking any kind of immunosuppressant or anyone who has um, uh, any, any kind of uh, immune deficiency. Um, I, I think that you should contact you as a family, as a parent, a guardian, or um, as a patient. I do. My daughter has allergies, um, and she's at West Creek. So I don't know if the nurses are this morning or today, she was having a runny nose and she was sneezing a lot. So could that possibly? The first thing you would need to know is were the, were, if you're concerned about this being an exposure to something in the school, was West Creek, did West Creek Hill have, have an elevated level? I don't know. And neither do I. Okay. So. She was there all day Monday and all day Tuesday. Okay. And she just started getting the sneezes and the runny nose today. Okay. So, should I send her to my PC, to her doctor, just to be on the safe side? Sure. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Do most of the other things that are in, that you may, like, I don't know, sometimes work, you may have clothing or jackets, and you can worry about them with something about those, or about clothing, or is it something that you can get in? Right. Um, the, uh, the biggest concern is for spores that are breathed in, okay? Um, if the spores are, one thing to understand is mold is everywhere. That's why they do a basis on the count of the outside the building and inside the building because kids' clothes or your kid's backpack might have had more spore or more uh, on it, but I can tell you that the coming in contact with it and touching it, it's not going to, to cause you an infection. It, it's really more of the breathing. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, my son is, my son, her child that has severe allergies, and I'm, that's a part of my immune system. We haven't developed any symptoms yet, but is there a window period of how long to wait before we see for symptomatic? That's difficult to say because everyone's different depending on what part of your immune system is missing. You may or may not develop symptoms sooner if you're going to, okay. or it may be later. I, I can't give you a specific so on there's that. There's like no like, time for like 7 to 14 days or like period that we should watch just if you're symptomatic. You know, I, I, I really can't give you that number. And I apologize. That's okay. Yes. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Dunkelberger. The um, question up here, in case you didn't hear it, was if, if you have a child who is experiencing some issues with it, 
and they miss the next day or they're not comfortable coming back on a day or two once we provide that report, that would be an excused absence. So that was that question in case you didn't hear it. Sir, there's a question in the back, then I'll come up to you. Yes. Yes. They they tested um they tested room library hallway first floor and that has the, the outside air was twenty one hundred. Okay, so that's your that's your basis. The, and we'll put this on the website. The library hallway first floor was four thirty. The science hallway first floor was one sixty. Room one twenty was forty. Hallway by room 121, art 150. Yes, yes. Um, then room 115 for my high school folks, can you give me a teacher's name? 115. Mrs. Wonders. Um, she was she was slightly elevated. She was 2300, so we're going to look into that. Um, and that'll be remediated before the kids come back. The no, there were not. But if I may, just so everyone has this uh, entrance end of Library Hill. So I'm assuming that's up toward the stairwell, correct? If you're if you're familiar with the library, so you're walking up the ramp. The library's on your right hand side. Uh, that was 250. The next is the cafeteria, high traffic area. So that's why you collected the sample there, correct? 490, and then the library was 770. So, do we? The uh, basement was not checked. So the first and second floor. Well, the basement was checked visually. There were no indications of visual mold. So we, the basement was checked visually, but the bottom stairwell was Correct, correct. Visually, yes. Uh, correct, correct. With our insulator and our remediation team. And they found nothing to uh, to be concerned about except for clutter. Did they do an air I'm sorry. More? Stepping here, more? Alright, sir, over here. Thank you for asking for that. I appreciate that. We've got a good job of that in my opinion. So I heard that there's going to be a lot of heat in schools. I'm trying to get to do it. That can be sent in fans or something to that effect? I mean, that, that, yes. Uh, we. Our hope is that we can find isolation valves and only isolate the areas that we need to to um, remedy at this time, we're still gonna need fans, right? but we're still going to need fans. The other classrooms, hopefully, we'll find those valves. Uh, we'll be able to keep the uh, children running. Uh, to, um, but it's finding the valves. Thank you. Um, I'm. I, how, how about if I do it this way, out of fairness to everyone and trying to address the concerns? I'm going to move through this first section all through here, and then. Then we'll get to the back and we'll hit the side. Is everybody comfortable with that if you have a question? So, sir. Oh, first. We had a lot of kids that um, through the summer had been over at the school with practices and whatnot. Any idea, I, I, I guess the expert over there would be best to tell when you're looking at this mold, how long it's been there? Sure. I think I can. If, I'll give a stab at it. And then, if because I asked that same question, and thank you for asking that. So I said, well, okay, it appeared in three days. And people said, well, that's impossible. And and I'm not a mold expert, but I asked that question. So, but the way it was explained to me is this fiberglass got wet from the inside out. So during that process, it's not visual. Unless you tear apart the insulation, you're not going to know that the moisture is there until it gets so wet that it actually comes through the paper and then drips. Well, when it came through the paper with that humidity, that's where the mold formed. So until it reaches that point, we, we asked, again, 
estimate about two weeks that it was happening, and then it did. The one thing I want to point out is that on August 10th, Mr. DeRazio and Mr. Campbell walked through the building, and there was no evidence on the tile of mold. So August 10th forward now to August 18th, 17th, thank you. And then they also ran security wire. We're putting in new cameras through these areas. There was no evidence of it there. It, it appeared rather quickly. I'm not going to say overnight because it wasn't overnight. But we estimate it was about a two-week, and I'm going to say germination. I don't know if that's the correct term. So I apologize if I'm using the wrong term. But we're going to say about a two-week germination period, and then it, then it came out. That's when it was notified to us. We tested it, and then we took the action. So we're going to estimate about two weeks in that far area. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> where at EPE did they do the testing? I know that it was only once, so we don't have results, but where did they do the testing at? You went over with the high school. Yeah, they, we don't have the test result, but you may remember the areas, so let's see. Did everybody hear that question? What areas were tested? East Denver. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, I, think I got it. So area number one was the ground floor hallway by teacher planning. Area two was a ground floor hallway by the special education room. I don't have, Mr. T's not here tonight, is he? So I don't have room numbers as a reference. I, Oh, oh, Mr. T? <laughs> Mr. T, welcome. So we're going to we, ask what area, so I'm going to describe the area, and I'll come closer to you, and you can kind of give a little more detail, <laughs> so they might be able to. So we're saying ground floor hallway by teacher plan, what room would that be by? What teacher for reference? Round. What was the question? What areas were tested? Let's go on the game show. Okay. So ground floor hallway by teacher plan. The ground floor hallway by, there is no teacher planning on the ground floor. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's a, that's a classroom now. Okay. It's a classroom? So down in the downstairs, the fourth grade hallway, basically. It's the downstairs. We call it the basement, but it's really the fourth grade and the third grade are music rooms down there, and we have a reading specialist down there. Let's keep your, let's keep your ground floor hallway by special. So where would that be? That would be near um, what used to be the, by the music room. At EPE. Ground floor hallway zero That's Miss Emmett's room. Zero zero five. Mr. Heltz's room. And zero zero nine. That would be Mrs. Luff's room. Zero ten. That would be Mrs. Knox. First floor by 107. That would be um, uh, Mason. Mrs. One, Mason. 110. Donovan. First floor in. That would be kindergarten hallway. 116 would be Bert at the end of the kindergarten hallway. First floor, hallway by teacher uh, first floor hallway by teacher playing that could be near the that's probably across from second grade near the um, the book level book room. Okay. That'd be in your main hallway, and then yeah, how about that? And then the eleventh sample was the control from outside. You're welcome. Good question. Um, should we should we do that for all the buildings while we're at it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, middle school. Here we go. Wood shop. Hallway by the nurse's office, seventh grade hallway. So, do I need to get Mr. Sim and put him on the spot and get specific, or is everybody familiar with that? Um, sixth grade hallway, fifth grade hallway, cafeteria hallway, eighth grade hallway, and the control. West Creek Hills, LGI hallway, the nurse's hallway, in the library. In the hallway across from room 15, my West Creek Hills friends room 15 would be Mrs. Weirich. Um, the modular hallway, class, modular classroom 29. Mrs. Lewis, hallway classroom by, in the hallway by classroom 2. I'm sorry. Mrs. Croft. The music room in the drop off hallway by the gym. If you attend West Creek Hills, you should be familiar with that area and then the control. So those are the areas of all the three buildings that have been tested, about nine or ten per building. And we, again, we should have those tomorrow. So thank you. Okay. Uh, so we're good. Okay, this, if you, if you could just kind of like pass it back. Um, quick question. You say school for the high school through Monday the 29th. Do you want the kids back to school on Monday or on Tuesday? Please clarify. Yes. Mr. Vogelsong was correct. So I, my apologies to him on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for the lack of clarity on that. 
We did, actually, uh, Mrs. Holly. Question about did we apply to the insurance agency? We did. We don't have a we don't have that back yet, but we are trying. So, another good question. I don't need a mic. Yes, sir. Just quick question. I talked this morning. Did you check on the duct system? Did you test the duct system? Excellent question, sir. And I did look into that, like we talked about. Mr. Brandt told me there is not a duct system in the high school. So how do you put the air conditioner in? It's a four pipe system, means that you're running two lines of a return and a supply line for each heating and cooling line. Okay. That system feeds the univent. All right, so the blower didn't stop for blowing the spores in the air, correct? Well, correct. Possibly. No, not possibly. Either it is or it isn't. Well, we have changed filters over the last two years to an antimicrobial, so it, it is helping. It's helping? Why did the mold show up to begin with? I think we addressed that question earlier, sir. Okay. So, sir, to answer your question, we'll check the blowers tomorrow, and there is ductwork in the middle school, and we already have a schedule to go through those tomorrow and do a visual inspection, and if there's anything found, we will do additional testing. Thank you. So I appreciate your questions, and I appreciate you bringing up the question that we didn't think about. But we will check those blowers tomorrow. I promise you that. Yes, ma'am. If they do find additional stuff in the middle school, are they going to close it again? If, or if, if, if the air quality tests come back tomorrow, and if there's elevated levels, we're going to we're going to have to close, and then we'll, we'll remediate and get you back as quickly as we can. But yeah, and and we will, and I promise you, if if, if let me ask you this. If everyone is okay, because I know sometimes the robocalls, people say, oh, God, not another call. <laughs> if I get the call, or excuse me, the report tomorrow, I will post it. Is the community comfortable and wanting a robocall to say, it's there? Yes. Yes. Consider it done. As soon as I have it, we will post it, and we will send out a robocall, and we will put it on Facebook, and we will put it on our website. Yes. Okay, and, and, I do, and, and I do, I do want to. It won't be at six a.m., but I do, and, and I please understand. And this is this is sincere. I am very sorry about the lateness of the notification this morning, and I try not to do that. So I do apologize. I will do my best to make that decision earlier, late or late in terms of notification, very early in the morning. So I apologize for that. Okay. Okay. Bye. My concern is the robo call this morning. Yes. Okay. If you if it was heavy on your mind throughout the night mm -hmm. last night, why didn't you send us that earlier? Because 5:45, I'm getting up to go to work. Mm -hmm. I have nobody to watch my child, exactly. so I have to take off work. I got an occurrence today because I had to take off work because you called the robo call called at 5:45 this morning. And I am sorry. I, I, I'm very sorry. I, you're right. So, if this decision, if it was me, or you know, if you if you had problems with you know last night, we should have got a call last night mm -hmm. to make arrangements for our children. Right. A lot of us work. I understand that now, yeah. and I. For high school and elementary. Well, then it becomes the question was: Is it easier to close the rest of the week? I mean, I guess yes, but then we we're trying to get them back in. If it's safe, we want them to come back. We want them to get back into that routine. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I understand. I mean, so. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back this way, and ma'am, I, I I am very sorry. I truly am, and I, I will do my best. To, I'm sorry. I'll do my best to not do that anymore. And that and I, that goes for the winter season that is quickly approaching. I apologize, but I don't think you addressed this. I think it's counterintuitive when we talked about the basement level um, water pipes not showing any evidence of mold. In the basement level, we were talking about the high school. 
why isn't further testing done? Because we just discussed it on the inside of that. So couldn't further testing, couldn't further testing done even though there was no visual effects on the outside? That's my concern. I agree. I, we are retesting the building on Friday, so we can include that. We will include that in our testing on Friday. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and again, I worked with a, a, a teacher who I had a tremendous amount of respect for in my early in my career, and she had a sign that said, "None of us is as smart as all of us," and I think that's applicable here. So thank you. And could somebody make sure that when we write that down, we'll thank you. I have a similar concern to what was just mentioned. Um, we're very concerned about our children, but we also need to be concerned about the teachers. And without naming names, there are asthmatic and immunosuppressed teachers that are in the, in the rooms right above the science hallways and in other parts of the building. So is there any plan to test any of those rooms on the second floor? Yes. Mr. Milbrand? Can you add that site? Thank you. Again, thank you. Okay. If, sir? First off, it's always good to react to a situation like this, but because we're reacting, it tells us we didn't do our job properly. The fact that this situation exists means we relegated our duties to make sure this wouldn't happen. Your corrective action plan is weak. It's not best in class. It's nothing that OSHA VPP or ISO 14001 for environmental health and safety would say was competent. It is construed and it will not fix the problem. The fact of the matter is, I have a company that's twice the size with twice the infrastructure with four times the amount of people you do. We do safety walks on a weekly basis, but before we do safety walks with the entire staff, that staff is trained what to look for, for mold, mildew, electric shock and all that and that's what should have been happening here if you would have followed osha standards you would have known that there's multiple cases of this in the south when they turn an air conditioning system on you are obligated obligated to go monitor the insulation on those pipes there is a device that they make that you stick into the insulation you go every 10 feet and it tells you whether there's condensation in that insulation the fact that you're not doing it is irresponsible. The fact that you think you can now say, I'm going to go quarterly and I'm going to take some tiles down, that's a weekly occurrence on a startup system. You start up your system two weeks before you open. This is what OSHA tells you. Start it two weeks before you open, sample, take your tiles out, and also you can take a humidistat and a detection device and put it against your tile and it'll tell you on the tiles. You don't even have to take the tiles down. It'll tell you if there's water in there. I suggest that you find the root cause of the problem, why it wasn't detected. I think that you need some systemic actions to make sure this doesn't happen again. And I think you should go out and check some people that are in business that do this on a regular basis to prevent these conditions. Find out what the best in class is out there. See what we do to make sure our people are safe. The question I have, besides my commentary, is if you knew there was a suspect mold problem on Friday, how could anyone who's responsible for the safety of people say, come to school Monday while I think about it? It should have been on Friday. I'm done. I'm done. I think there's a problem. Would you let people come to school if you thought there was an electrical problem that if somebody put something in an outlet, they'd be killed? No. You knew there was a problem. You took too long to make the decision, and you put people at risk. Now, we don't know what kind of risk it is because we don't have the results. We're all to not do an air sample in the basement. To think that you can have wrappings around cold water pipes that you're not going to monitor, but quarterly, it, it just isn't going to get the job done. So, thank you. And if, if possible, if you can remain after the meeting, I'd like to talk to me a little bit more, talk about those standards and make sure. I think, again, going back to listening to your experience. I think we can benefit from it, so I appreciate that. And um, and I think again, back to the issue about opening the school. I understand what you're saying, and in conversation, I made the decision. Agree, disagree. I understand that. I respect your opinion. I made the decision based on the information I had. I did not have the report at the time, but I understand completely. You know, I, I get what you're saying. So thank you, sir. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, 
So you said that the high school is going to reopen on Tuesday unless any further issues are found. Is there a contingency plan for the rest of the year that you're working on right now so that we don't get to Tuesday morning and go, okay, now we have to find something to do for the rest of the school year? Yeah, we, are, we have to actively seek for spaces. Um, and then the other thing, again, if this would prolong, we'd, we'd have to arrange to move furniture, books, and uh, some computers. So yes, we are trying to come up with some ideas. And again, if anybody, somebody had mentioned an office building that's vacated in the area. I'm sorry? Okay, okay. So, you know, we can actively investigate that, but right now we're focused on that remediation. So, so good question. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, coming back. The question was, with the AC system running all summer? It was on the weekends. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. The, it was running all summer. There was a setback on the weekend, which was typically effective, but with the high humidity, we didn't adjust for it. And that's a, this goes back to what this gentleman said earlier. We have to adjust for that. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, I personally have had a problem with mold in my own home. So I know how severe this is. My first statement is uh, regarding the HVAC system. After you turn that on and it filtered through the uh, uh, antimicrobial uh, filters, okay, that still pushes through the HVAC system. Is that correct? Okay, has that HVAC system been tested for mold? Or looked at for mold? No. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. There was visual inspections done on a few of the questionable units. Questionable, but not all of them. Okay, so if you're filtering that air through that system, don't you think that it needs to be a closer look taken at that entire system? Yes, well, last month we did a complete preventive maintenance. But then the problem just came up within the last two weeks. So maybe that needs to be looked at. And there's also systems that have UV lighting that you can put on those systems to prevent that uh, mold from spreading. And my other uh, question is, is the state involved making sure that all protocols are being followed in the removal of this stuff? Uh, the question was state being involved. Mr. Brand, the company that we're using, um, I forget the name, I apologize, they're certified removers of this type of condition. Is that correct? And they were sent to us by Heinz, so they're going to follow the protocol. I don't believe that's, is that, I don't believe that's necessary, but we can look into it. We did meet with the health inspector today from the township and shared the information with her. And so, okay. Sure, sure. Can you, Greg, did you get that? Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Buckets in the hallways at the high school. Roof system inspected. Right. 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 Mr. Brandt, did you um, proof system inspection? Yearly. Yearly. So when was the most recent one done? Okay. Did, did we find anything? As far as the leaks. Well, we usually do have areas of concerns that we address. I'm sorry, what was the question? Question was right. Right. Yeah. And were those leaks addressed, Mr. Brandt? Absolutely. And that's is that a tar repair? Uh And so um, ma'am, you asked a question. The question was was the roof inspected, any leaks identified and repaired? That's what the gentleman asked. And Mr. Brandt said that they did an inspection in April. And so they identified if there were leaks and they repaired them. And then I'm assuming, why don't we take another look just to make sure. But I already 
Okay. okay. He asked if there were buckets in the hallways when served last year. Last year. Last year with rain. And Mr. Brand said they identified leaks and repaired them. So there are not still buckets in the hallways? No. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Working my way back. Ma'am, I know you've been patient. You'll be next, I promise. I'm, I'm a student at East Pensacola High School, and they said that the mold was found two weeks ago. And I know that myself and several other students have witnessed the mold and pointed it out to the teachers. So that's all I have to say. It's been going on for two years since I've been there. Thank you. I have a daughter who attends uh, West Creek Hills. She's six. Um, I would never want to put her in harm's way. However, we know, I know that you guys are not going to please everybody at all. And when it comes to Friday, you guys found a substance that you couldn't tell whether it was mold or dirt. Had you guys closed the school on Friday and it ended up being dirt, there have been plenty of parents that have been very upset that school that has started on the first day of school for dirt. So I know you're not going to make everybody happy. But I do have a question. You guys did say that the cold pipes were wrapped. And you guys are going to turn the AC off. So the pipes are going to condensate with the wrap on. Is that going to create the same problem with the mold under the wraps? I don't have that answer. So uh, I'm going to ask, thank you, uh, Mr. Brand, if you can, did you hear that question? Thank you. Hold on. So everybody can hear you. Hold on. The current insulation that we have on our pipes at high school, the current uh, insulation that we have on our pipes at the high school is a fiberglass um, insulation with a cellulose backing or paper backing. Well, the same thing we're removing, that's what we're removing. We are replacing it with a Armaflex product, which is a rubberized insulation that is sealed with uh, glue and it has a, a micro, um, uh, my, microbial uh, barrier in it. Um, so hopefully, you know, from what the ins insulator and, and our contractors have told us, we will eliminate this concern moving forward. Ma'am, ma'am, is that, do you, have a, do you have a follow up that you wanted to add or a question? I want to make sure we try to get an answer. Yes, I understand, and, and and I appreciate that, and yes, thank you. Table. Mr. Brand, dude. It's a different kind of insulation, and it will keep the moisture out. Is it a different? Wait, wait, sir, hold on, one, one second. Just, uh. Sorry. I just need an answer for that. These cold water pipes that you said are wrapped. We understand they're wrapped. Okay, so are you guys going to take the insulation off those cold water pipes and replace it with the correct Armaflex like you're doing the HVAC pipes? So you don't prevent another problem from recurring. That's all I want to answer for. So, Preston. That is, I'm sorry? Okay, so so what we're going to do, um, and, and I want to go back to what this gentleman had said earlier. I appreciate the point that he, he mentioned a tool that we can look into, sir. If you can give us that name, we'll, we'll purchase it as quickly as possible, and we'll, we'll do exactly what you're saying. Go right into the insulation, and let's take a look at it. So it's not. In terms of graduation date, we're going to do everything we can. It, it, we don't. 
Right. Right. We are. We are going to make it up. Yes. Thank you. Question was, are we going to make up the days? We are. We are going to make up the days. So, um, so, okay. Maybe you're next. As a middle school student, at the beginning of the year, they clearly said that you just don't go to the nurse if you just have an upset stomach or something or you have a headache. You said that people should be going. People could be having systems and just not going because, and so sucking it up because you said you just don't go to the nurse that stuff. Okay, so so you're in a meeting and you you were told that. Okay, all right. So, um, Mr. Sim, I don't. I, <laughs> you know, I, I will tell you. Um, I, this is this is going to be me talking. If you don't feel good, go to the nurse. Okay. So. He said that um, he was he was told in a was it a grade level meeting or a meeting that you were told to wait hold on let's get the mic there so yeah. if you had like a if you had like a headache or something you just didn't they told us that you just don't go to the nurse that's when you really don't feel good. And people could be having systems and just not going to the nurse about it or telling anybody else. And I'm going to say to you, like I would my own son, if you don't feel good, go to the nurse. We'll talk after. We'll talk after. So, okay. All right. I, uh, okay, yes, ma'am. I just have a question about um, the disruption and the education. The kids have Chromebooks. Can we use these Chromebooks to their fullest ability? Can we get instruction on these Chromebooks so the kids can stay home? Like today, they're off. Could they do homework at home using, utilizing what they're carrying around all the time? But the elementary school doesn't have Chromebooks, so how's the elementary kids that are going to be I understand that. No, but I understand that. Because kindergarten just started. Okay. Okay. So, to go back to your your point, um, sorry, folks. I know it's getting long and it's getting warm, and I, I do appreciate your patience and I appreciate the questions. Man, you're absolutely correct, and I can tell you that Mr. Hanson, who is not here tonight, and Mr. Garazio, along with Mr. Sam, and I know because Mr. Hanson's at both buildings now, have talked about that exact professional development sessions, setting up Chromebook uh, classrooms, and things that they can do. So that even if we run across this again in, in the winter or just extend it if we have 30 inches of snow again, which I hope not, we could have this as an option. So that's, yes, that's a great point. That's a great question. We're, we, we're hoping to get it up and running this year. So at the very least, in a few few of the subjects with the classrooms, get the instruction, get the Google Classroom, and then kids can take or at least gather the instruction, or excuse me, the content and come back with it. And we'd have to... Yeah, and, and I and thank you for bringing it up, and that's a thing I did overlook. If we would reduce the classes, the idea would be to use the Chromebooks and the classroom to provide the instruction when they leave the uh, additional. Mr. Hansen did what was called a flip classroom, and a lot of times he would give the instruction that would happen via the computer, sort of learning management. The kids would look at the content, and then he would come in, and they would assess and talk about it. So, yes. Okay, great question. Thank you. Anybody else? I'll come back. Let me just move across. Table. Table. Oh, sir, you, and then ma'am, you, and then you as well. When you're when you uh, when you're gonna shut down the air conditioning to your stop, when you bring the student when you bring the students back in without air condition, um, the buildings are gonna get humid, which is gonna create more situation where you can have more mold producing. Are you gonna monitor it during that humid state? Because if you're going to be with month without air conditioning, those buildings are going to get very hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everyone, did everyone hear that question? Will we monitor with the air conditioning off? The humidity is going to rise. The question is, will we monitor? We will. Um, I can assure you, there's going to be very active. And again, I, 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 I want to go back to the gentleman earlier. I'm, I'm very, I'm interested in talking to him about these standards because 
you know, he's talking about making sure we're at that level, then that's the level we need to be at. So I'm, I, I really want to talk with him. Yeah. Correct. So thank you. Thank you. My understanding is that you said the buildings were checked every year, and now you're going to do it every quarter. Why wouldn't you be checking it that often before? My kid has asthma, and he had major issues before, just the air quality, the humidity, breathing in the elementary school last year. He was always in the nurse's office getting his inhaler. Again, we, uh, we did visuals. They did preventative maintenance. But moving forward, we are doing it. And it and, and sounds to me, after talking with that gentleman, it's going to be even more frequent. So it was preventative maintenance, so they would do it that way. And then they would monitor the filters, and they would look at the visual inspection. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. I hope I remember what I wanted to say because uh, Preston brought something up a little while ago. Um, Preston, did you say that you were going to be fixing things as they come up and uh, applying your attention to those things as they come up? Yes, as they're brought to our attention. But isn't that just a Band-Aid fix? Like, you probably want to fix everything now. I mean, I worked... I'm, I'm saying, though, because I worked in... Um, I did... I did work in Louisiana after Katrina went through, and we helped families rebuild their homes. However, it was just a band-aid situation where you just put up tile and you covered up what the existing problem was. So I'm just asking if fixing it as it comes up is just a band-aid solution, or? Well, I, I must have misspoke what I was talking about. Preston, hold on one minute. What I had said earlier, I believe, was that as it's brought to our attention, it's not that we're not doing preventative maintenance, but as issues arise, like a roof leak, and it's brought to our attention, we address it immediately, as, as soon as we can. So I don't want you to think that, you know, we're not being preactive in, a, in, in our service uh, for the district. I just want you to know that you're going to continue to have issues. Um, and, and that's just the nature of, of buildings. Um, so as they're brought to our attention, we will address them immediately, like we have. I, I hope that answers your question. I have, a, I have a question from a student up here. Do you need me to come back to you at this moment, and then I can, or do you have another question to follow up? Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, I'm a student at East Pennsville High School in 10th grade, and I would like to uh, say that there was, in fact, buckets in the high school on Monday, um, and also that the ceiling tiles were completely removed in the science hallway, and if there was a possibility of... Uh, no, that's happening now, yes. We will be done if things go as planned um, for return of students for Tuesday. Okay, now the ceiling tile may be open until we re-insulate the pipes, but the removal and the remediation of the insulation, the current insulation, should be done before Tuesday. So basically the ceiling will be done, the pipe will be exposed, the pipe will be underneath that, that won't be able to draw water, and that will create another little Correct. Correct. There won't be any condensation or intention if we cannot isolate. You know, obviously we have to be dead. But if we can isolate, our hope is to keep sections of the building operational while the other sections are 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 offline. We are, our plan was not to do those pipes at the moment, no. That's a question. I think people have asked several times, and we keep thinking we're talking about HVAC pipes, but the actual cold water pipes in the building have the same type of insulation, and they're not being changed, right? At the moment, no. They've just been visually inspected. Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. Um, I'm going to work my way back again. I just wanted to know if you're going to address that student statement. Uh, it's been two years that mold has been identified. What has been done about that? Anytime, as far as my understanding, anytime mold is brought to our attention, it is inspected, it is looked at, and if it needs to be tested, they test it. So we've run tests at East Pennsboro Elementary in a lower classroom in the past. Other places that you've run it, um, West, Creek. West Creek Hills. In the past few years, that means students have been notified people. All these tests come back negative. There's no problem. Because I know I've never heard anything before this past year about mold problems in the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, uh, do we have roof links after roof? No, the student, the student said that there's been mold identified over the past two years. I'm not sure who identified it, but I, I'm not sure how someone can identify it outside of a professional that, that took samples and sent it off to the lab. But anytime something, a stained ceiling tile or a leaking HVAC system, brought to our attention we go through you know our own cleaning process with our uh, Santa Master 4 uh, sanitation uh, chemical and and we, we clean it the best we can you talk so you, that's why it comes up now yes sir yeah, with the buildings, uh, with the AC being turned off, what is the school district going to do to mediate potential heat casualties if students or teachers start collapsing from the heat? Yeah. I didn't hear. I didn't hear what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Your hardware does open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They open. Okay, um, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'm just a little concerned with the no AC. I know that um, to some people it's not a problem, but my daughter has frequent nosebleeds and she's an asthmatic. Like, so when she, it doesn't feel very hot to me, but clearly her body is overheating. Like, so. I don't know how comfortable I feel with her being in a hot classroom all day. Without the risk of getting into medical information, just a very general question, does she have strategies that she's aware of that she begins to overheat that these are things she needs to do to cool down? Yeah. And if she does, then we need to share that with the nurse. We need to get the teachers that information and she will be allowed to do whatever she needs to do necessary to get that reduced. And as Mr. Brandt said earlier, we're hoping that we can isolate sections so that after it's repaired, we can turn it on and that system can provide some relief throughout. I can assure you, they will work as quickly as they can to get the insulation on. Okay? She will be allowed to go to the nurse. I'm sorry, but my daughter just said the same thing that they were told by teachers that they can't go to the nurse, that if they have a stomach ache, they're supposed to put a trash can inside. Okay, let's make one thing very clear. And this is, and I, and you can ask my colleagues, and I hope that I'm not lying when I say this to you. I very rarely say this, but as a superintendent of schools, if you're sick, go to the nurse, and if you're told not to, call me. I don't know how to make it any more clear. Okay? If you don't feel good, go to the nurse. So that's issue. And to the students that were told, it's in, you know, you're saying you, I apologize. We have nurses in the schools to deal with sick students. If you're sick, go. You and I don't know each other personally, but you and I have spoken to each other on cell phone concerning some issues that happen in the softball field. And I want to vouch for Dr. Burkhart that when I had a problem in the softball field last year, he stepped up, he did what he had to do, and he resolved the problem. So please, when he says he'll call you on your cell phone, he will do it. Trust me, he will. I'm sorry, did I miss somebody? No, she's Oh, oh, she, okay. Somebody, did you? Yeah. I'd like to address the gentleman from Cumberland Analytical, if I could, if you don't mind. Um, so a lot of the whispering that I hear around me and a lot of the questions that we're asking um, that we're getting a, a little bit of what we feel is a vague answer to is, 
not testing like every square inch of the high school, not testing certain areas, not you know feeling that a visual test is just enough. Um, I want to know from a professional standpoint how comfortable you're going to feel with with just testing the certain areas that they have. Is that what normally done? Um, how is mold isolated into those areas? Do we have to worry about it being everywhere or not? Because none of us are the experts. And I don't feel that we're getting a direct answer for that question. The testing we've done so far, I'll try to be as loud as I can. Can you hear me in the back? Okay. The testing we've done so far is what I would consider preliminary testing. We're trying to get a handle right now as to where any of the uh, any of the mold issues start and stop. So that's why we were doing different random samples as an expanding semicircle, as I call it, to try to see where exactly we were starting and stopping with, with mold exposures. But yeah, we're, we're not even, we have a lot of more sampling to do in these schools. As soon as the remediation is done, we will do probably 30 or 40 more, more uh, samples in the high school. So to answer your question, there will be a lot more testing done in these areas. This is this is triage. The checkups later. I'm sorry. This is triage. The, ch the tra checkups later. Well, we're trying to get a handle exactly where it started and stopped. That's what I'm saying. This is triage of the problem. The checkup of the whole thing is going to be later after we get the immediate bleeding. As stopped. soon as the remediation is finished, we're going to go through the school and we're going to have to do some more testing prior to anybody coming back, and we're going to do an expanded, complete, total testing at that point. Is it possible that there are areas that still have mold in there in them you have not tested yet? Are you talking about growing mold or air? I'm talking mold in general. Are well, there certainly, areas I mean, in I, the high I, school that have not been tested yet? Because I don't know about any other parent. I don't feel comfortable sending my son back to school if you haven't checked every square inch of the building. Okay. Just got done saying like, after they get the preliminary test back, they're going to test every single high school. On Friday, as soon as they're finished with the remediation, we're going to we're going to go out and do it. We didn't say everything, and I think that's what we're concerned. If every inch isn't tested, then how likely is it that it's safe? And you know, from a, I mean, you're a specialist. We don't know. We don't know that every inch needs to be tested. Or Gen generally, we don't test every inch. Can't really test every inch, can you? No. Every room. And the, the samples we're taking are, you know, random samples at a given time and space. So, I mean, that can change from day to day. What we're doing is we're trying to establish whether or not there is any type of contamination throughout the building or if there's a pattern to the contamination. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> All the way in the back. All right. So we're gonna go. We're gonna reverse it. We're gonna go back to front. How's that? She's been there for a while. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry if you've been um, ignored or overlooked. I apologize. I'm sorry. Okay. Can I her and then you? All right. Um. Along with the what the woman right here had had stated, obviously there's going to be some lingering trust issues. It seems people not knowing whether everything is gotten or not. What are the chances of bringing in an independent inspector, maybe that's not township related, somebody who wouldn't have anything to benefit from fudging anything, so everyone can trust what's really going on? Well, the gentleman who's speaking to you is independent, um, but aren't we? We will contract another independent person. We'll have to pay the other person to come in. And, Sure. Um, Mr. Milbrand, write that down. We'll see if we can find someone at the state that can take a look. Sure. Right. Yes. Good point. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, but she's been waiting, and then I'll go back. <laughs> I just want to know if they're going to post uh, the reports so that the public can see what it was and what it is. Yes, the post, or excuse me, the report will be posted on our district website and we will place a, we call it a robocall to the community stating it's there for your review. We'll post it to Facebook, uh, 
We'll post a notification on Facebook. We'll post the reports on the website, and we'll do a call statement. It's been yes. It'll be, um, and Mr. Roush can kind of vouch for this, but we the basis is on what's found outside. That is correct. That's correct. So, so they'll, they'll, it'll be like a, there'll be an area that'll say this is what's collected outside, and then it'll identify the area where it's been recorded, and then the results will be there. And if anybody has a question, they're certainly welcome to come in. I'll do my best to explain it. Or maybe we can even, you know, uh, hold a little meeting and we can go through it. Okay? But it will be posted as soon as we have it. So we'll go one, two, three. I might not make a lot of friends by this statement, but as a taxpayer, I know that there are plenty of people that have fought for the pool, fought for the maintenance. Now we're at another maintenance issue, and maybe we should consider who we're, co who we're subcontracting out for our maintenance. EPA guidelines for all of this. I think you would make everybody feel a lot better if you would just say we are following the EPA guidelines. <laughs> Mr. Roush, can you? I will be back. The American Board of Industrial Hygiene Association has put together guidelines. There are no standards for mold. Two states, as far as I know right now, is Massachusetts and New York, actually have procedures for abatement of mold. Uh, we have a training program in Pennsylvania, but there are, there are no standards that I'm aware of. We've pretty much copied Massachusetts and New York. Uh, not that I'm aware of. I'm sorry? Where did your certification come from? Mine? My certification, which one? To take to take air samples? I'm not doing the remediation. I'm not a remediation contractor. I am a certified indoor air quality specialist. And that was through the World Health Organization about 20 years ago. I also have a chemistry degree, and I've been in this field for 30 years. I am an independent, yes. I believe your your maintenance people are overseeing. They're certified as mold remediation remediators in the state of Pennsylvania. It just means they establish negative pressure and they have, and they do a, do a clean job. Go ahead. I actually have a question for Dr. Wait, I'll come back because you should. Before this summer, I'm not aware of one. Who did we do one last spring? Where was it? Do you remember? West Creek Hills. It was in West Creek Hills, right, Mr. Brandt? Yeah. So, so West Creek Hills last spring. All right. The young man who had the question. All right. Well, the food that's out under refrigeration is out under refrigeration, whether the air conditioning is on or it isn't. No, it's not. It's out. Well, I don't. That, Kevin's not here tonight, so I'm not exactly sure. Oh, thank you. Can, So the dummy that sits out, that's in the refrigeration section, honey. It'll be okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. 
Okay. So why not be considered green if you don't have to use the food that you make? Okay, all right, okay. I understand. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. And then, sir, I'll be over to you next. I know that you'll resolve the problem because both you and Betsy have helped us in the past, and I know you'll do a good job with the problem. But a question, we're new to the middle school, and I know there's a swimming pool, and I know everybody voted to keep it open. We personally weren't for the pool because we think it's a money pit. But when you took the test, the humidity levels from the pool, the pool wasn't going on. So the humidity test in the middle school won't be fair. So the, the question is about the humidity. The pool is not in operation right now. There's no water in it. So there is a separate, pressing correct me if I'm wrong, a separate air handling or HVAC system there. And it's designed for a pool. And there are exhaust fans. So, so when it's up and running, we will. So, Mr. Milbrand, did you record that? Okay. So, sir, since I'm closer, is that okay? Uh, just going back to what the gentleman over here had said earlier, um, and the quarterly tests that are going to be done, is that going to be done in each of the buildings quarterly and not just random? And those will be posted on. Okay. And in conversation, we may be increasing that frequency, so that's why I want him to stick around so we can talk. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Preston, we said that the potential for up to a month. Yes. We're hoping that's worst case. Oh, when? Um, it would be next week. Next Tuesday, potentially. So, well. Yes, I mean the hottest part. The hottest part of the school year. Oh, I'm right in front of your camera. Sorry, that'd be a kind of a close picture. With all, with all this going on, can it be postponed just a little bit uh, until maybe September, so it's a little bit cooler for the students? The question has come up several times about postponing it. The issue with postponing it, and Preston, I'm going to give it my my best shot, is that there's there are insulation areas that are wet. And as a result of that wetness, they need to be removed. So we have the contractor on site removing that. Once that pipe is exposed, if we restart the air conditioning, it's going to cause that pipe to sweat. That pipe will sweat on top of the ceiling tile or into the floor. It, I'm sorry, the removal has to happen. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. I hope so that covered. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time and the heat, and the patients, and man will be right with you. We're going to take, take one or two questions. We're going to then ask any questions for Dr. Duckelberger or Mr. Rausch before they leave. The administration will stay back. We'll answer any question that we can. But again, out of respect for our guests, and I want to thank them again. If you could please, you know, give them a round of applause because they came on over time. So, I'm taking your question, your question, and then we're going to wrap it up, and we'll stick back for anybody who has a question. I'm going to go back to the heat casualty issue. I'm here, I keep on hearing students in here saying uh, they're not allowed to go to the nurse because if they feel nausea or vomiting. First sign of a heat casualty is nausea and vomiting. So if the lady in the back room saying 28 years ago, you had no air conditioning, well guess what, I was there with you. So if, if the students actually are feeling nausea or they think they're going to vomit, they need to go to the nurse because people have died from being a heat casualty. So just to reiterate, kids, if you're sick, you don't feel well, go to the nurse. Can you post We're recording them. Yes. The yeah, question is, we have some questions that have been recorded to the best of our ability, and we'll get those probably not tomorrow because we've got to transpose them, but we'll get them typed and get them up as soon as possible. So with that, if you have questions, we'll stick around, but I do sincerely want to thank all of you. We appreciate your time, and we'll stick around and answer any questions. Thank you.